For today, we're going to talk about the top five characters of each color in Dragon Ball Legends. I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe and post down below what your rankings are for the top characters of each color, again, in DBL today. So this is the post-Legends Festival list, if you will. We're heading towards, if just for future reference, heading towards January 1st, 2024, and we're at the tail end of Legends Festival 2023. And I want to kind of start off with red because red is a really fun color featuring one of my favorite characters in the game And I think honestly, I don't really know that it's close The best red character in the game is currently ultimate Gohan personally just overall I think there are three really strong characters in Consideration for top one character outside of just color separations, but just top one in the game It's him the UI Goku and the evolution Kaioken combo combination character uh, Tag character. There's a couple others after that that are super duper close, but I think that those are the three characters that could anybody could argue as number one in the game and gohan here incredible character also is the most effective character i think there's a solid chance that another character i'm going to mention this list could wind up being really close to what i'm about to say but uh gohan in my opinion is the most efficient character most effective character at dealing with ui goku that just came out again there's a couple other characters that are really really close but anyway gohan number one on the list powerhouse definitely going to be insane for a really long time Next character on my list. So this is where things get kind of weird, bro. This is where things get kind of weird because all the characters I'm going to choose are on the screen. Oh, by the way, I want to throw an honorable mention to Red Second Form Cell. Really strong character, but he's just gate kept. You don't really see him. These Legends Mega Rising characters, I think, are only on those banners. So, yeah, he's not worth it. I'll also throw an honorable mention to this guy and also that Gohan with the glasses. I like these characters. Castle is okay as well. But the next guy on my list, it's really funny because immediate inclination is VB. I'm going to give it to him, but I think that may be a little, a little bit just like bias, name recognition type deal. I don't think he's bad by any means. I still think he's an incredible character. Ah, ah, okay. I'll, I'll say, I think he's pretty calm. Actually, you know what? The reason why I was going to say what I was going to say is like, eh, maybe he doesn't deserve second spot, but I think he does because I don't want my, my list to be like meta specific. I just think Kit's best character individually. I think that's fair, which by the way, if, if I'm going based off Kit's, you can make an argument Vegito has the best Kit in the game in terms of like out of the red characters, again, over Gohan, but I think Gohan is so perfect, like individually. Uh, very few flaws with Gohan, if any. So Vegito Blue, the only real flaw with this guy is that he just loses God status, right? After that instant, like, what, what is it, 40 counts, 60 counts? It's been a while since I read it. But that after that early start where he has all the immunities and stuff like that, nullifies unfavorable for 30 seconds. Uh, there's the card protection in here. After that stuff starts falling off, he becomes infinitely easier to deal with. But still, man, uh, this guy was <laughs> able to basically live with nullify cover changes and stuff like that. And it's interesting to see how he interacts with UI because I've seen a huge range of players. And let me know what your experience is saying that he just absolutely decimates the UI. And my experience has been kind of the op opposite, right? So I, I don't, here's the deal. UI Goku being on certain teams, I think matters a lot because like if he's on USS, USS just dog walks fusion warriors and God key and stuff like that. They've got better characters at basically every color except for red. And so he can get protected and he can have good, strong allies. So it's not a one-to-one -one thing, right? It's not type advantage beats color, you know, color beats color. It's not exactly that clear cut. The way I see it is UI Goku has neutral. He's got the defensive neutral. He's got that gauge that stops Vegito Blue's strikes uh, mid combo, which is actually not great for VV because he really wants to keep going and keep landing those. Um, UI Goku also absolutely shreds this guy. The blast cards do an insane amount of damage. So, like, that's, and I'm not trying to be biased. I'm just saying from my experience, right? That's kind of the way I see it. Now, I also, funny enough, put up a video. I put up videos this week with UI Goku, like, one-shotting a 14-star Vegito Blue. Also, I put up a short of Vegito Blue uh, not doing any damage to my UI Goku at all. But I also put up a video of UI Goku, show, of, of this guy, excuse me, showcase recently, and he performed pretty well for me. So, <laughs> Vegito actually performed pretty well. So, like, it's just kind of weird how this guy's situation is right now. Now, after him, I think it's a lot more clear-cut, makes a lot more sense, and you can have the following characters in any order that you see fit. Personally, I'm going to go with Pan next. I think her stock has skyrocketed. I think Pan is easily one of the best aging characters in the game and one of the best aging characters at, like, you know, it's just a general pool SSR character, not a premium character like an LF or anything. 
I think that she is one of the best ones in the game in terms of that. Like, there's a few other candidates like Revival Frieza, things like that. But Pan's utility, man, is, is amazing. Uh, she's also a character that you put on just teams and you don't really rely on her to really do much. But that red, red, green team with her, Red Beast, honestly, red, red, blue with Blue Beast as well. But red, red, green with her, Red Beast, and, and Pycon or Piccolo. He's just crazy, dude. And it absolutely craps all over UI Goku teams, things like that. It just like, it, if you run into that team with UI, again, you've probably beat it before. If you've seen that team, you use UI. I'm not going to say like everybody's in that situation, but my experience was that like, yeah, no, 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 no. If I didn't have a blue on my team though, to be fair, that's why I'm saying like, if you don't got a blue, <laughs> you are screwed, man. Uh, so yeah, there's that. But Pan is next on my list. Amazing character, amazing utility. Next on the list is going to be Vegeta here. Vegeta, I think, like I said, him and Pan can switch places. Honestly, I was going to say Vegeta earlier. May be the most effective character at dealing with UI Goku. Uh, he's, he's really close to Beast Gohan. Not in terms of quality or anything like that, but in terms of that specific trait of dealing with UI. Anyway, Vegeta got an amazing Zenkai and is 100% worth consideration for any Saiyan team that you're going to be building. Awesome character, and it uh, shouldn't be anybody to surprise to anybody that he got an awesome Zenkai in Legends Festival and is usable up there in the list as well. So the last red that I'm going to do for the top five, honestly, I've thrown out a number of characters, thrown out some of these honorable mentions things like that and i actually feel pretty content with most of the characters on my list but the last character is going to be hit hit again could be a character that peaks as high as number three on this list it just depends on the teams that you like to use like to run i unfortunately he's one of my favorite characters unfortunately don't have hit but when i've run into him in this meta he has still performed very very well the time skip still skill excuse me is super duper strong against ui as well it's strong against every character but ui just gets <laughs> it gets blown up man so hit is a character that again has has seen better days in the past kind of fell off but is completely back um and in terms of teams he actually also has that universe rep tag right so he should be fine in terms of the current meta uh rival universe universe rep yeah he's he's got it man he's he, he's from the previous tournament, but he's still... Universe Reps being added as a tag was a huge, huge deal. Uh, he's still able to be around on that team, so hits right there. Again, you could switch those those three characters however order you see fit let's move over to blue but before we do that rhymed hit that thumbs up subscribe if you are you get it you get it i'm not gonna say it all right so super janemba is the best blue in the game and i don't know how close it really is um you can maybe make an argument that the next character is close but i think super janemba is the best and again i don't know how close it is personally this guy is crazy, crazy, crazy. But again, it should be no surprise. He's he's not power crypt or anything. He's like just about two months old. Uh, the most recent ultra prior to the UI we literally just got last week. So like he he's not falling off. In fact, he should be better than he was than he than he was then. He should be better now because they gave him more tools on his movies team. Now, if you start talking about other teams like Regen and blah blah blah, obviously you probably go down in quality on some of those other teams. But movies with this guy and Beast is just crazy. And again, you can plug in other characters alongside these guys. I talk about you know that red red blue with Beast. You don't really need that. You can do Jamba if you want and just peak really high. The gauge on this guy is still also one of the ultimate bite the bullet abilities in the entire game either you take it off or you don't but if you don't you're probably gonna get uh if you don't have a green anyway you're probably gonna get really really punished and one thing that kind of happens with the best of the best characters in the game excuse me is that they force meta shifts in terms of the opposition colors because when this guy came out it became super duper mandatory to have a green on your team it became super mandatory to have a green on your team uh, because you needed somebody to eat that opening ultimate, man. It became mandatory. It's very similar to the beast right now where it's like, you really want to have that blue. <laughs> you really want a blue on your team. And also UI Goku, you really want a red. The evolution Kaioken, also the Bardock and Goku, I should have mentioned in the opening sequence of the video, that first thing I kind of mentioned there in that consideration too. Uh, but since they flip types and stuff, it's not as pressing, right? But yeah, for these characters, you really want to agree. And Janemba is the best character in the game, in my opinion. And like I said, the next character on the list is Goku and Bardock. You can maybe make an argument as them as the best because Indestructible is amazing. They do a crap ton of damage. They're also dual typed as opposed to like reverse, which also is kind of dual type too. But I really like covering two specific colors, uh, main, uh, main line colors, I guess I'll call them, green and blue, with one character individually. And again, that's pretty much it. I really also like 
the um the fact that they're anime or orig- game original as well because i have high hopes for them in the future they may age super duper well as we go ahead and proceed with more game original characters coming in the game i'm probably forecasting we get a couple in the year that's not a lot but i'm not mad at that so anyway i love them they're amazing they do a crap ton of damage they're also super duper annoying with that aoe green card <laughs> and they switch a lot switch fast very strong character so the next one on the list is is kind of um It's pretty straightforward, but this list gets kind of hard. This list gets kind of hard. Android 17 is right here. And Android 17 is a character that I think meta relevancy could peak as number one, by the way. Like, I'm talking about, like, usefulness. I'm I'm factoring the meta a little bit, but not really. It's not my primary thing. But I think in terms of, like, flat-out meta, you could say he peaks as high as number one. Maybe number two. Ah, It's kind of hard to say. Maybe three is still... Maybe the list shifts because I think Goku and Bardock are the most relevant in the meta right now. That's probably because they're new. But nonetheless, 17 is incredible. Um, so 17, where is his... I, I haven't really talked much about individual kits too much on characters, but where is his value? Because I see people still get kind of confused about 17. So I'm going to spend just a moment going over his kit. So very standard. By the way, 17 also, contrary to popular belief, is a damage dealing character that has utility right? He's not a defense type or anything like that. He is a damage dealer. He's a range class character. So he draws an ultimate, gets health, gets key, increases draw speed, nullify cover change. Very strong main, but also very cookie cutter and straightforward. Does pick up the 30 second, you know, nullify there, which is pretty good. He gets extra blast damage versus fusion warriors. Hello, VB. Uh, the following effects occur when the battle starts. He gets damage, damage cut, and then nullifies attribute upgrades two times to allies. So allies don't get any downgrades. Also, nullify abnormal conditions once to allies so he is shielding your allies from taking any negative status effects so that's also a very big deal as you'd imagine when he enters the battlefield he's an offensive pivot because he draws a blast art and gets the key to use it also applies falling effects itself every time an ally uses an arts attack or an arts plus 10 percent damage inflicted can't be canceled activates eight times and minus arts cost can't be canceled six times so whenever his allies do stuff he gets stronger the following effects come when an ally activates a rising rush plus 70 percent damage for the rising rush by allies that rising rush is going to kill right most rising rushes will but there is no doubt you know where this is really strong this is really strong when you're doing like a type disadvantaged rising rush because it's going to offset that disadvantage inflicts all enemies with minus 70 percent health restoration for 30 counts if the character this is where this is really strong too if the character somehow lived it, they are going to have a health restoration debuff, so they're not going to be able to come back. In most cases, that's just not going to work. Also, you better hope it wasn't an endurance character, because if you rush an endurance character, and obviously you're not nullifying on that in most cases, if you rush an endurance character and they come back with the endurance, yeah, they're still alive, but they're going to come back with 70% reduced. So very, very strong stuff. He gets that extra vanish, which is super duper annoying, 80%, and then it does reset on switch. He does have a knockback, uh, slightly charges his own gauge every time an ally is hit with an enemy's attack. And then when the gauge is full, he gets one time, restores his health, gets 50% special move and ultimate damage. Also applies an attribute upgrade of minus 15% to enemies' stay damage cut effects to allies. His allies get 15% more cut penetration. Very, very, very strong effect. And you get that simply by filling up his gauge. It reduces the enemy's Dragon Balls and seals the main. And then this is the, the main bread and butter of 17 right here. The following effects occur when an enemy activates a special move, ultimate, awakened arts, or rising rush while he's on the battlefield. This next one, and, and this one, and then the next one. So if they do anything while he's on the battlefield, he shortens his ally sub count and cancels enemies' attribute upgrades and buff effects three times. That is insane. So if they try to rush 17, he shortens ally sub count, so maybe you can throw a better character to eat that rush. You know where this is really strong? You could throw that damn Goku and Frieza in there, and they can cancel that rush. <laughs> That's where this is really strong. Um, but he also takes off upgrades and buff effects, so they're going to hit like nothing. And they're not nullifying because he takes it off, uh, assuming all that stuff is canceled, I guess. But yeah, he's going to chop all that off, bro. And then last but not least, this is the best thing that I think people overlook with 17. It requires no usage of him. He's He could be on standby for this. The following effects occur every time the enemy uses a special move, ultimate, or awakened arts while this character is on the battlefield or on standby. Restores allies' health by 10% three times. The effect activates even if he's defeated. 
<laughs> so if you try to hit him with the, if you try to hit one of them with an ultimate or awakened or, or the purple card but we don't really have that an ultimate or special move or the purple card um he heals inflicts the enemy with a downgrade a minus 50 percent to special move ultimate and awakened three times so this right here this type of stuff in here is why this is the hardest matchup for beast gohan because 17 just chops all the damage off of every damn thing. And you know, Beast Gohan's kind of slick because he's a transforming character. His primary goal is to, in like tag characters are the same, their primary goal is to beat you with special move cards. They don't have that ultimate. They just don't have that utility. And maybe in the future they give them them, but they don't have it now. So Beast Gohan kind of floats under the radar with some of these abilities because some of them just target awakened arts and ultimates. I think UI also just targets awakened and ultimates. So like, Having 17 makes a huge deal because he's on standby. You don't have to switch him in or anything. He just tops the damage, right? So UI all of a sudden goes from dying to living pretty healthy. So that's a huge, huge deal. 17 has, again, I should call him an offensive character or a utility character with offensive capabilities, what I should have said. 17 is insane. Crazy character. Now, the next few are kind of fun because I'm going to leave this up to you guys. My actual list would be number four, Goku and Frieza. I don't know if I'm going to put them in. I'm going to put them on both lists, I guess. But I'm just going to remove them because just know they're going to be on both lists. But next, it would be Goku and Frieza next. And then it would be Beast Gohan. And that would round out the, round out the five, right? But I also wanted to throw a bone to the tag Goku and Vegeta. They don't suck anymore. They're actually really strong with this equip. I really like them a lot. And also this guy. So he kind of, he kind of. He kind of got it. Kind of got hard to use him a little bit with the with the fact that his main gimmick was to reduce key and stuff like that defensively and stuff. But it, his offense was obviously fine. But it got kind of hard to use him. But key protection isn't like all that relevant. Not a ton right now in this current meta outside of like Janemba. But like, I think he he's a character that he might have had the biggest fall from grace since Super Saiyan Four or Super Saiyan Three Goku from last from the four year anniversary. Right? How as soon as the anniversary ended, that Goku fell off. He was still good, but he fell off relevance rise. This Goku's the same way. But I really, really, really want to throw him a bone. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to round out my list with a few honorable mentions. Also, shout out to this guy. I think he, similar to the other Goku, kind of fell on hard times a little bit because of the key reduction stuff. If you rely on key reduction with like gauges and stuff to really get like those force, those combos to end, you kind of struggle a bit. Um, you have to like also do like main sealing and card destruction and all you got to do all that extra stuff now Like kind of like Frieza and Gotenks are kind of doing but nonetheless you I wanted to throw also a bone to revival Frieza um I think that's basically it. There's some other characters that are like, okay, but that's pretty much it. Like Zamasu, he's just kind of okay, right? Another character that kind of relies on that stuff. But to short it off, uh, I'm going to just summarize here. Super Janemba, Goku and Bardock, Android 17, Goku and Frieza, and then Beast Gohan. All right, let's move on to the next one. So we talked about, oh, by the way, I didn't really talk about those other two characters because I spent a long time on 17, but they do things that are really awesome. That's all you need to know. Beast Gohan's still going pretty strong. Probably the oldest character on the list entirely. Green. So green is kind of fun too, because I, well, okay, let me just say this. The best green in the game is Goku and Bardock. There you go. But they're already on one list, so I will remove them from this list. I'm going solely based off of the website, so I actually kind of hope I'm not missing any Zenkais. I want to pull up Zenkais. Ah, oh, no, no they're, maybe they're not the best green, by the way. I think they're the second best green, because the best green is the tag, right? The tag Goku and Vegeta. Uh, am I missing any Zenkais? If I, if I miss any Zenkais, if I just happen to forget them, please forgive me throughout the video, because my list is, like, kind of out of it's kind of out of whack. Um, but I will throw an honorable mention to a couple Zenkais on the screen currently. Super Gogeta, really strong Zenkai that we got just before the uh, Legends Festival. I also really like God Topo, very, very strong Zenkai character and probably the second best green character on a lot of his teams. So definitely worth considering. Jiren is okay, pretty solid. Uh, and Evolution Vegeta, or excuse me, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta from the future arc, still has that one mechanic that's still really strong. Kaoken Goku, actually, I love him. He's really, really strong too. So anyway, moving on, let's go back to the regular list. Best green is the tag Goku Vegeta. And uh, I almost want to say it's not close, but I really don't want to disrespect Goku and Bardock. But this character is insane. I've 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 done nothing but be super duper like praiseworthy on this character. I always talk about how amazing they are because every time I use them, it seems like I'm pulling off some crazy comeback win. <laughs> Seriously, I've had a bunch of like one v threes with this character, and it's funny as hell to do and see because they just go and 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 wait a minute, they stop for a second, but they're going again. <laughs> 
So I love this character actually a ton, dude. They're so fun and so amazing. Next up would be Goku and Bardock, but let's just ignore them because they already made my list. Uh, but they're the next best character for both of their groupings, which means they're an insane character. So <clears throat> this list is kind of funny because I think that when you look at the green roster, you're going to see what I'm talking about in a second. There's a lot of characters that could be in a lot of different places. I'm going to throw an honorable mention to Kiawe. I think she's really, really strong too. Still, I'll throw an honorable mention to this Gohan. Absolutely underrated. Absolutely under freaking rated. At, and I'll say it again, underrated as hell. If this dude had endurance, I think that's the only thing holding him back. He can eat hits. I've used him a lot on like hybrid teams and stuff. Like the hybrid team is so fun to me. Him, Gotenks, the Beast Gohan, and uh, and Blue Trunks, stuff like that. So fun. Um, He eats hits, dude. So underrated. So, so good, in my opinion. Um, I think if he had endurance, though, he got a lot, a lot more recognition. But yeah. So those are the guys. Oh, also Rakum and Guldo. The team is like not one that you see, but they're also still the second best character on that team. And there's, they're really strong. <clears throat> if anything, this should tell you that the meta is super duper healthy. So I, I would like to say that the third next character on the list is Rose, by the way. I just don't really love where his teams are at. I don't love Future. I think Future is just kind of okay. Uh, they have, I mean, they have some good stuff. Like the front three characters are really, really, really strong. So I'm not really mad at that. I just don't really love where they're at. And you and uh, Rose seems like the characters in the meta right now, he kind of struggles with a little bit from my experience. I don't really care as much about him and the way he kind of functions, especially on certain team compositions. These characters that kind of rely on gimmicks that are like debuffs and stuff like paralysis and blah, blah, blah. Uh, not that he relies on that. You know, or kind of just whatever to me. But I will give him a bone in this. He has the ability to just hit you with relentless ultimates and blues and stuff. And he just spams that crap. And so that's enough to deal with pretty much any character in and of themselves. Just because you're throwing a bunch of hard-hitting attacks. I think where, the, where he kind of has difficulty is with some of the other characters around these characters. To make that very clear. And that's kind of why he struggled and kind of fell off a little bit. But... I will say that I think that when you're talking about most of the characters on this list, they can all kind of deal with in the proper scenario in a proper situation. They can all kind of deal with each other, right? It's not as clear cut like, oh, this character just sucks, right? So I will give uh, Rose the bone here, but I really, really, really think that the next few characters, all the revives, basically, there's three revives on the screen, could have easily been right there. And probably you can make an argument should be right there instead of Rose. So the next character on my list will be, ah, Oh, this is so, this is so, 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 so tough. I also really like Magenta, by the way. Uh, anyway, PyCon. I'm going with PyCon next. Uh, the next couple characters, PyCon included, like, they're all so close. It's like one of those, like, pick your poison things. Like, which one do you want? Which one? Actually, it's not which one do you want. It's which one do you have and which one do you have more stars on, right? <laughs> That's what it really is. It's like, which one do you have? Which one do you have more stars on for him and Piccolo, right? That's really what it is. I think PyCon does a couple of different things. I'm not going to spend a lot of time elaborating too much on him or Piccolo because, again, I want to get through this video a little bit quicker. I do have a separate video where I talk about those two and go over their kits specifically and the way that they function. Uh, PyCon's pretty versatile, but Piccolo wants to be on more of a strike-based team. But lucky for him, his main team, being the movie team, is a strike-based team. So he's fine. So anyway, Piccolo awesome. Uh, got that equipped that's kind of underwhelming, but he's a lot better in today's meta. And uh, like I said, because Janemba and also Goku and Bardock, you probably want to green on your team. And again, like I said, the red, red, green team with him and, and or or Pycon, right? And the red beast, red pan, it's just, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. This guy. um, Definitely getting a resurgence lately. I always love this Goku. I actually always really loved this Goku. I especially was really, really happy with using him in the pre-revive state, the Super Saiyan Blue state, because, you know, revive characters most of the time pretty much suck. <laughs> he at least had that main ability that could be useful. So I liked him a lot. And then post-revive, that like, what, 40 counts where he has the nullify and all that stuff is pretty awesome. His art's really good. He's, he's just a character that would just pop off like crazy. Yeah, 40 count nullify, 60 count draw speed, 60 count extra damage, Full gauge on transforming, extra damage, and then another 30 for extra 60 counts. 
Also, uh, when he enters the battlefield, cancels any downgrades and conditions, restores key, knock back against strikes, combos into blues, has the, the obviously the auto dodge gauge. He doesn't do anything else on it though, but he does have the auto dodge gauge. His green card was strong too, restored his health, excuse me, restores key, restored the gauge, gives damage, and cancels those debuffs. And then the blue card also hit pretty hard too. So I like him a lot. I, I don't think he's as good as the other revives personally. But I do like him a lot. So that's pretty much my list for green. Let me know what you guys think overall. All right. Uh, also, like, there's still some other, like, solid characters in here. Like, the green Goku, I think, is okay. There's some free characters, like this green Vegeta. Like, I think green is a fun color, man. I think green's a really fun color. Shout out to the other green revive. <laughs> it feels real bad, man. It feels real bad. All right, yellow's next. Uh, oh, yellow is... Yellow's kind of easy, isn't it? Yellow's kind of easy. Ah, uh, actually, actually, no, it's not. It's actually not easy. Yellow's actually not easy. Never mind. Yellow may have more characters than green did. So I guess I'll start by flipping over to Zenkai's and doing some honorable mentions. Yellow Cell, easy honorable mention, super strong character. Uh, Yellow Bardock will be on my list. So there's that. I, I think he's the only one I'm going to give an honorable mention out of the Zenkai's. I don't really care too much about some of these other ones. Like, you can you can use some of them, but I don't really care much about them. <clears throat> so let's go over to the regular list. Uh, I'll throw an honorable mention to this guy. He wouldn't really be on the list, but I like him a lot as a free character. Uh, honorable mention Rakum and Guldo, but they were already on the other list, so I'm not really going to bother with them in this one. But just know, again, since they're dual traded, same deal applies here. Um... Honorable mention will go to Tapion. I like him a lot, but you're not using him. I like Roshi a lot, but you're not using him. Because some of that's just, like, old characters or, like, multiple options on some of the teams, right? Uh, I like the the newer yellow Roshi, not using him either. I like Super Vegito a little bit, but he won't be on my list. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, oh, there's going to be one character that gets snubbed here. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to have... Go tanks, Golden Frieza, Jiren, the Gammas. <laughs> all fighting. <laughs> and Bardock, by the way. All fighting for three spots. Eh. Eh. Maybe Kid Boo's the one fighting for that spot. Number one is UI Goku. Easy. Not even gonna bother. Not gonna bother. Just all you need to know. Crazy character. Does that no switch effect? I think no switch is probably the most broken ability in the entire game still. So yep, there's that. There's nothing you can do to it. So just whatever and and you know what the the nasty thing about him with that no switch he does is that he just draws an ultimate and then you you literally can't switch they he also does a couple count debuff too so assuming they don't do anything else you won't be able to switch so there you go you know the nasty thing also about that no switch i'll just say this and we'll move on is that he does that and then the game still registers it as a switch attempt so you you still get the sub count debuff on your characters not debuff but like the 10 counts just natural because it registers it as a switch <laughs> so yeah so, I'll leave this up to you guys. Who do you think is the next best character? Is it Kid Buu, the Gammas, or Bardock? What do you think? This is where I said, like, yellow's kind of eh, right? I even, I actually honestly kind of like this character a little bit in this meta too. But I don't think they're great, but I kind of like them a little bit right now. Yeah, yellow is actually kind of tough. I think I would go Bardock here next. Them unrestricting his nullif his uh, endurance is also a huge, huge deal. Uh, let's briefly talk about his kit. Picks up the nullify uh, cover changes there. Restores health and key. Gets the ultimate. Minus 50% to the health restoration on all enemies. Uh, when the battle starts, gets 90 damage. 35% cut. Nullifies abnormals and gets the endurance effect. Also, after the enemy's attack is over, he does that no switching here. Crazy, man. The three count no switch. Like, you're at neutral, but still very strong. Also applies rolling effects when the ally is defeated, blast cost down, and goes neutral for damage sustained permanently. Also applies falling effects to self every four counts while his character is on the battlefield, plus damage and minus arts card cost. Knocks enemies back to long range if a cover is performed against their blast arts attacks, does combo into a blue card. Also, when the enemy switches while he's on the battlefield, he reduces next damage, so you can't really try to take advantage of him. Sword's ally sub count reduces key and gets key recovery. And then also when he enters the battlefield, he draws a blast, gets key, and also applies falling effects to self per defeated battle member, extra blast damage. 
card draw speed and key and then last for his passive upon landing a blast arts hit he gets 15 percent blast damage inflicted minus blue card cost minus 15 percent health restoration and also if there's a defeated battle member activates one time gets 20 percent extra damage and then nullifies special cover change i went through his various passives very very quickly <laughs> very 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 quickly bardock is kind of like he's kind of like cookie cutter but i think the utility he has right now being another endurance character that's permanent and in this meta uh, very blast heavy. He fits that well. Uh, Saiyan heavy. He fits that well. I think he's perfectly fine. I think Kid Buu though, with the green card shenanigans and the way that he, he functions, where like if he gets you with that green card, you're kind of stuck. And you just kind of lose. It's not as 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 dire as it was because when he came out, like reds were like not really a thing. So there's that. But he's still incredibly strong. So I'll leave it up to you guys who you choose. I I'd probably pick Bardock just because I think relevance is, is a lot higher right now. Not even a little bit, but a lot higher. Um, we'll talk about the Gammas next. They are the next character on my list. You can honestly make an argument for them being number two, by the way. They are so damn strong. I think the only problem I have with the, the Gammas is that all of a sudden their best team is androids. You could say maybe that might have always been the case. But the reason why that is especially the case now is because just movies is just too strike based. Movies is just, it's way, way, way too strike based now to really, 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 way, 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 really, really, <laughs> really have them as a primary player on this team. Unless you're going for a mixed team, which more power to you if you are. And honestly, you could probably say that that's always been the case in terms of like this team because they had Cell here. Incredible character. We'll make our purple list. Cell is an awesome uh, character that you would want to have on that team. A ranged character there. Magenta functions either way. Perfectly fine on any team you want. At the gammas you have 17 you just you were good here so yeah you could make an argument that's probably always been the case now that i think about it but yeah i think that's probably the only problem with this character is that that's their main team but core breaker is still insane if you get to it uh the damage they can do the, the fact that they go neutral on that tag is a huge deal really really strong so i want to throw a uh, bone to frieza the most important thing with frieza is that stupid effect that he gets when he gets low on hp Throw a bone to Gotenks gets a similarly stupid effect whenever I think when you pop his endurance, but also having endurance and just being a defensive wall utility character on teams that didn't really have it. Like Fusions needed a character kind of like that. They had some options, but he, they kind of need that. Am I making the argument he's better than Vegito? I'll leave that to you guys to decide. Actually, I think he probably is. Is he better? It feels weird. It feels blasphemous to say that. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, movies doesn't really have that too much. Hybrids kind of had that with some of their options, like the greens and blues I talked about, but I don't mind having more of that. Also, Jiren, incredible character, I think is just, I think you could, I think it's another situation like Piccolo and um, Pycon, where it's like, pick your poison, which one do you have higher stars, which one do you, uh, you know, have things like that going for. He's another character that is able to play either way, right? His blast and strike attack are basically the same. He's a defense type character. I'm sure he holds one and one. He may or may not have, I have to go through it. He may or may not have a specific buff towards either. I'm not really sure, but you can put him effectively on either team if you really wanted to. So there's a lot of congestion with this group, actually. I thought it would be easy. It really wasn't. Purple, maybe purple will be easier. Okay, who's the best purple in the game? Hmm. Is it Goku and Frieza? Is it like literally Goku and Frieza? <laughs> I guess that's debatable. I guess it's debatable. But I think it's Goku and Frieza, but I think it's debatable. So let's start off with the Zenkai list and I'll go through a few honorable mentions. Honorable mention, first form Frieza, still trucking along as a good character to use on teams, good utility character, good support. Honorable mention will also go to. Eh, that's about it. I don't really. Other characters are going to be on my list. I think that's about it. I was going to say Super Vegito, but like that's really pushing it. That's about it. All right. So the actual list Goku and Frieza, I think. So let me just say this. Now that we're on purple, I think it's more relevant. This character starts off as a purple, and that's probably how I should have handled these tag characters. I didn't think about it at the time. Uh, so UI Goku. If you are using this Goku in this meta, you need to be damn aware of UI Goku. Why? Because that UI Goku with that no switch will two card this character. They don't even need the ultimate. He will just he'll just or he doesn't even need the ultimate. He'll just he'll just two card this character. So the second you see UI Goku, you need to do this. And the funny thing is, if you even do that, you probably still die. 
that is the most important thing is that UI Goku's sniping ability. Now I typically talk about and use UI Goku in a fashion where he's like the offensive character. He's not trying to snipe, but UI Goku also can snipe. You could have, you know, a green character hit Frieza once and then flip to UI Goku, keep the combo going and they try to switch and then you draw an ult just to snipe somebody off and kill them. I don't do that very much. I don't talk about that very much, but that also exists for every character in the game. UI Goku sniping is crazy. The only problem that you may have is if it's versus a red and he's not neutral. That's about it. Anyway, this character, Frieza, probably still again gets decimated. But I will throw them a bone that they still have probably one of the best mechanics in the entire game with the Rising Rush effect that they have. Look at all these damn traits, my god. <laughs> god dang. Probably the most traits we've seen in the entire video. And they just do so many shenanigans. This is a character I think can like can peak very, very highly. I've seen some people say they're not in the top 10. Depends on the list you're talking about, meta or kit-based, right? But regardless, they can peak as high as number one, in my opinion, because they're so damn strong. Another problem that they kind of have is that their best team has kind of shifted away from them. The Universe Rep team has shifted to being more of a Blast-based team with the release of the Tag Blues, with the release of UI Goku. It shifted to being more of a Blast-based team. So that all of a sudden, their best team isn't really catering to them any anymore, excuse me, in the same fashion. So all of a sudden, their best team has become Frieza Force. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, anyway, with Revival Frieza and Purple Frieza here, yeah, I don't know that you really want, want to run that trio right now, though, because UI Goku, but at least prior to UI Goku, that trio would go crazy. Goku and Frieza would freaking nuke. They would do so much damage. They would blow everything up. And yeah, that's all I got to say about that. So, you know, I think, I think though... Their best team, I think, now may have shifted. Actually, looking at the roster, their best team, in hindsight, of the last couple of weeks, anyway, they have shifted back to being Universe Rep. Or maybe some other team like Sun Family or something. Or Saiyan, even. Maybe Saiyan, because Saiyan has got relevance. But the reason I say that is because they don't really have, like, a, a red Frieza Force that you want to use them alongside. Maybe it's the... Actually, no, they have that Vegeta in there. Maybe it's that Vegeta. I don't know. I think UI Goku has shifted placements for several characters, and they're probably one of those characters as well. All right, let's pull up the list again. It's not working. I need to pull it up. And there we go. So next on the list is this. This is also kind of hard to do. This list is kind of hard. I'll go Jiren. By the way, shout out to Purple Whis. I just saw him. I really like Purple Whis. Um, good utility character. Purple Jiren. One of the best walls in the game. Another character similar to 17 that is a pivot option uh, that has or a utility character that has offensive utility. Uh, this guy is a character that also starts going crazy as last man. And when he's used with 17, also again, because seven him, him and 17 also have perfect color synergy too. Like Goku and Frieza's best ally in general is 17. But you're running a mixed team, and I, I don't know that you really want to do that. You could maybe, you know what you could maybe do with Goku and Frieza 17 and then like UI Goku? Maybe that's their best trio. I'd have to think about it. They're just kind of in a weird spot right now. But Jiren's not really in a weird spot. He fits perfectly, range character, all that stuff. He is a rising rising rush eater because the endurance, all that stuff. And if you pop your rising rush, you just make him stronger. When his allies start falling, he gets he just gets stronger. Jiren is an awesome Zenkai, awesome character, and uh, definitely worth that placement, in my opinion, on the list. Next up on the list is Perfect Form Cell. Still has one of the most annoying mechanics in the game. I can't tell you how many times I have basically won a game, but I lost. Why? Because when he pops his stupid final counter, he basically screws you over. You can't do anything. You can't switch. You can't use cards. You just can't use your main. You just can't do anything. You can't do anything. And if you already popped your Vanish, you're screwed. I'm pretty sure he doesn't take the Vanish off. I'm pretty sure that if you popped it already, you're screwed. Let's pull it up here. Oh, uh, when this character enters the battlefield, where's the effect that charges the gauge? This guy has a gauge too. Awesome. Unlike the other final counter characters. Um, <clears throat> Where is it at? So much stuff going on. Two battle members when the battle starts, knocks enemy back, charges gauge. Every time the enemy uses a card while the character's on the battlefield, when this character enters the battle, where the hell is the freaking final counter? Oh, that's the very first line. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's the very first line. <laughs> Massive explode when this character is defeated if there's a remaining battle member. Uh, half of the damage inflicted will also be dealt to enemy members on standby. Uh, the following effects occur when the final counter hits. Destroys all of your enemy's cards. Minus two draw speed levels. Minus 50% health restoration. Does no switch. Boom. There you go. 
The following effects occur if there were at least two enemy battle members remaining. Seal's Rising Rush, Seal's main ability. <laughs> Get Seal up out of here. Get him out of here. I hate him. I've, I've been in a position to win so many games, but he just swung them completely with that one ability. Get him out of here. Um, Honorable mention to Ginyu. Uh, super duper strong character, but unfortunately tries to be a one-man army, and I don't think Birder and Jace are good enough to deal with the strong yellow in the meta right now, so there's that. I think if he gets you in the right scenario, he can really, really shred you, and I don't and I understand exactly why he doesn't have nullify cover change, and I don't really think it's a problem that he doesn't have it, but I think right now, in today's climate, I think he probably really wants it, but also at the same time, if he had it, he'd be too damn good in terms of like just non-stop comboing, so it's kind of a weird character, kind of a weird placement, one of those characters that in the right situation right now could still just basically solo you, like I could, I could queue up a video with Ginyu and probably still do extremely well with him and his team, but kind of again, a weird placement for them and, and overall uh, how they function. I also really like um, Red, Arm Red Ribbon Army Piccolo. I also really like Hero Tapion. You guys got a lot of honorable mentions throughout this video. I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, where was I at? I think that was number, what, three? We had Goku and Frieza. We had Jiren. We had Cell. Next up on the list will be Gogeta. Oh, I also still kind of like Broly's one. Like, Broly has like two or three things he does that I really like, by the way. I also really like his Z ability. Gogeta kind of stuck right now you know the problem with purples and he's 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 almost immune to it because ui goku exists right and ui goku's primary preference is to use those blast cards so this guy's almost immune to it by the way but the problem with purples is that you get locked in there like i talked about goku and frieza that was not just a goku and frieza thing you get locked in if you have a if you have a purple and he gets you and you, tr you can't save them you absolutely can't save them they're just dead so this guy almost can save himself just because I don't think UI has any card protection. I have to go back and look, but assuming he doesn't, he'll pop those off and then UI Goku will be forced to use a blast card or something. And yeah, there's that. So it is what it is. I believe UI also has a close range blue card with blast armor, right? So that's not a big deal. That, that is a big deal for Gogeta, by the way. But yeah, Gogeta, I think nonetheless though, like his gauge is what I was trying to explain there. It's a character that's aged extremely well in the game. So definitely a character worth using. But otherwise, he, he falls victim to the UI Goku lock too. Like if you can't actually get the gauge, you just kind of are stuck. And that's really unfortunate. He's just gonna shut you down. So I know, I know the next character I want to go to, but I think I want to make sure that I confirmed everything. Shout out to Kid Goku. Falling on hard times right now. I bet he's another character I could use successfully right now, though. Okay, yeah, the next character I'm going to, I think this is number five, is UI Goku signed. Uh, also an awesome character. <laughs> he's another character that would just get absolutely obliterated, but you're hoping you don't get hit because his gauge, right? The buffs they gave him still holding true to today and very strong character. Let's move on to, uh, no, that was it. That was our last one. I guess I could have spent a little longer on UI, but it is what it is. Video's gone long. It was supposed to be like a 20 minute video max. What is this, 40 minutes? Yeah, 40 minutes. I knew it was a 40 minute video. <laughs> so all in all, we have some amazing characters and you know, really going through the video, I'm sure there are characters that I missed that are very usable and very strong. But what was your memory? One thing that stuck out to you throughout the video, like was it a lot of universe survival characters? Cause that probably is true. <laughs> that probably is true. They just have so many strong characters. Um, but my thing is that there was a lot of diversity in the meta. I think there's a lot of really, really, really good characters that made my list. And I think there's a lot of really strong characters that didn't make the list, but I kind of threw them out there as a name, like Green Cow, Ken Goku. I like him a lot. Like I said, he's on the screen currently, so I see him. Um, characters that didn't make my list necessarily, but I threw them out there that could be super damn strong, right? That's my thought. So I think the game's in an interesting state. I think the top end though is like, like I said, three or four characters and then a, a pretty sizable gap to the rest of the game. And you could argue that's not necessarily great, right? You could argue that's not necessarily great, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you were new and I will see you all in the next Dragon Ball Legends video.